if Kimball can't throw a strike, this ball game is tied. If Masters gets a base hit, this ball game is at least tied. The 3-1 pitch is a drive deep to The Mississippi State Bulldogs began their 100th season of baseball by participating in the fourth annual Bush Challenge at the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. The Dogs opened against arch rival LSU in front of 9,411 fans. LSU pushed across five runs in the final four frames, winning 7-6. Shortstop John Che jumped on LSU pitching, setting a Bush Challenge record by going five for five, including two doubles. Game two matched the Bulldogs against the University of New Orleans before a challenge record crowd of 12,531. But UNO pitching held the dogs to six hits and the Privateers pulled out a 3-2 win. For the first time in Coach Ron Folk's 15 years at Mississippi State, the Bulldogs opened the season 0-2. But the veteran club remained confident and claimed the dogs' first win of the 90s with a 7-4 score over Tulane University. Returning to the friendly confines of Duty Noble, Bulldogs won their home opener over Birmingham Southern with an impressive 7-0 shutout. Bobby Green pitched two-hit baseball over seven innings, struck out 11, and got his first win of the year. The Dogs pounded out 12 hits in the evening, a record even now at 2-2. Two two. The Bulldogs continued to progress slowly over the next five ball games, winning a low-scoring affair with the Jackson State Tigers and splitting pairs with both Memphis State and the University of South Alabama. Entering the conference season opener with the LSU Tigers, the Bulldogs stood at 11 and four, having won six in a row. Sports Channel came to Duty Noble Field to televise game one of the series that saw the Bulldogs fall short, losing to the Tigers six to five. John Shea continued his assault on LSU pitching, going two for three, and Scott Mitchell gave the dogs a lift off the bench as he entered the game late and went two for two. Mississippi State bounced back in the nightcap behind the complete game pitching of Tracy Jobes to win 2-1. to one. In the rubber game on Sunday, the Bulldogs again pulled out a one-run victory, scoring twice in the bottom of the 13th. The Dogs counted out 15 hits, with Cohen leading the way, going 4-4. Four for four. Slowly but surely, these 1990 Bulldogs were finding themselves. Returning starters were warming up, and the gaps created by losses of key starters in 89 were being filled. David Mitchell began to assert himself in center field and in the all-important leadoff spot in the lineup. Fifth-year senior Scott Mitchell grabbed his opportunity and became the starter at second base, while Burke Masters moved to third base to fill the shoes of Pete Young. John Shave made the move to shortstop, and junior Jim Robinson assumed the leadership role behind the plate. With the series win against LSU behind them, this veteran group moved forward confidently, pursuing not only a conference championship, but also a trip to Omaha. After splitting a pair of road games against the University of New Orleans, the Bulldogs traveled to Tuscaloosa for a three-game set with the University of Alabama. The Dogs dropped game one, but bounced back to win game two, 4-2. In the final game of the series, the Dogs jumped out to a 10-1 lead with Shade, Rappo, and Eccles all hitting home runs, and Chris George pitched a strong seven innings for the win. Weekend three of the conference season brought the Kentucky Wildcats to start going. Facing Wildcat ace Rod Bolton in game one, the Dogs rallied for three runs in the bottom of the eighth to back the complete game shutout pitching of Bobby Reed. In game two, Mississippi State pushed across nine runs on 12 hits and took a 9-2 victory and the first two games of the series. Game three saw Chris George toss a complete game shutout, the Dogs second of the weekend. Mississippi State completed a three-game sweep with an 8 nothing victory. David Mitchell had a four-hit game, giving him seven for 13 in the series, while John Cohen continued to swing a hot bat, going three for five with a double. After week three, the Bulldogs stood atop the conference race at seven and two, followed closely by both Georgia and LSU. 
Weekend number four found the dogs traveling to Auburn for a series of the Tigers at Plainsman Park. For the third time in four weekends, the Bulldogs dropped the opener, but rebounded to win the nightcap, this time by a score of 13 to nothing. Again, Job pitched great following the loss, and John Cohen got a two-out, bases-loaded double to key a six-run third inning. In the pivotal third game, the Tigers handed Mississippi State its first series loss of the year, winning 8-4. With the two losses to Auburn, Georgia and LSU jumped ahead of the Dogs in the conference standing as the run for the championship developed into a three-horse race. The Bulldogs picked up three midweek wins before traveling to Gainesville for an ESPN date with the University of Florida. Moved to a Friday afternoon to accommodate ESPN and national television audience, Tracy Jobes got the ball in game one. Jobes responded with six strong innings before giving way to the bullpen in the seventh. But the Dogs couldn't hold the lead and went into the ninth, trailing nine to six. With their backs against the wall, the Bulldogs rallied and tied the score and sent the ball game into extra innings. Unable to score at the top of the tenth, the Gators came back in the bottom of the tenth to score a run and win the opener 10-9. to Having lost the first game of the series for the fourth time in five weekends, the Bulldogs met the Gators in a crucial doubleheader the following day. Game one saw Chris George go the distance, getting plenty of support in an 18-4 route. Cohen had four hits with four RBIs as he continued to hit well in conference games, and this game also introduced a new face to the Bulldog faithful, a redshirt freshman designated hitter Rex Buckner, who collected four hits and a couple of RBIs. In the series finale, Bobby Reed got the complete game victory. Final score, 7-2. Catcher Jim Robinson collected three hits, including a home run and three RBIs, and Buckner went two for two with a couple of RBIs. The Vanderbilt Commodores were up next as the conference season moved to week six. A Super Saturday crowd of 9,500 gathered to cheer on the dogs. Game one again proved to be a tough one for MSU. They dropped the opener four to two. The dogs battled back to win the nightcap eight to six before the fifth largest crowd ever at Duty Noble. Tommy Raffo had a couple of hits, including a home run and three RBIs, as Mississippi State earned the split. In game three, the Bulldogs scored five in the bottom of the seventh and posted a 12-4 victory. While virtually out of the race for the conference title, this scrappy bunch of Bulldogs refused to give up their ultimate goal, Omaha. The Bulldogs were beginning in a stretch of which they would play some of their best baseball games of the year. Tournament time was on the way, and the dogs were going to be a tournament team. Next on tap was the SEC tournament at Hoover Metropolitan Stadium outside of Birmingham. The Bulldogs went in seated third behind LSU and Georgia and faced host Auburn in the opening round. Before a crowd of 7,236, the largest crowd ever to see a collegiate baseball game in the state of Alabama, the Dogs avenged two earlier losses to Auburn by shelling the Tigers 16-2. Game two of the SEC tournament pitted the Dogs against LSU for their fifth meeting of the year. All four games so far had been decided by one run, with the series even at two games apiece. Such was not the case in this night, as LSU scored six early runs and coasted to a 17-8 win. Moving into the loser's bracket for game three, the Bulldogs regained their winning ways by defeating Florida 8-2. Owen hit a pair of doubles, while Raffo and Echols had two hits each, as Mississippi State scored six runs in the top half of the seventh to break it open. In relief of ailing Tracy Jones, John Harden pitched seven innings of three-hit ball for his fourth win of the year. Harden, the eventual SEC tournament MVP, was finding his magic at tournament time. Game four matched the dogs against Vanderbilt. With a chance to play LSU for the championship, Mississippi State outscored Bandy 17-9. They punched out 20 hits, including four each, by David Mitchell and Masters. Raffo drove in five runs with a pair of doubles, with Scott Mitchell and John Cohen adding three hits apiece. The dogs would get their rematch. It was LSU for the sixth time with a tournament championship on the line. Bobby Reed was starting on just two days rest. Mississippi State pulled ahead quickly, scoring twice in the second on a clutch two-out hit by Scott Mitchell. Mitchell would also drive in a third run in the seventh as the dogs pulled out a three-to-one win. 
Reed pitched five strong innings, allowing one run on two hits as his scoreless streak ended at 20. John Harden and Chuck Daniel held the lead over the final four innings as the Dogs forced a deciding championship game. Amid heavy rains and lightning, Game 6 was canceled and Mississippi State and LSU were declared co-champions of the SEC tournament. Seven Bulldogs were named to the all-tournament team, including most valuable player John Harden, who set a tournament record by tossing 11 shutout innings. The Bulldogs would be hosting their fourth straight NCAA regional, but not since 1985 had Mississippi State won the final game and made it to the College World Series. Opener for the Bulldogs saw the second seeded Dogs pound Brigham Young 16 to 5, as Burke Masters became the SEC's all time hit leader with a solo home run in the fourth. Masters and Shea each went four for five, while Raffo and Echoes each homered as the Bulldogs backed the three hit pitching of Reed, who got relief help from Tim Henderson and infielder Charlie Anderson. It was an impressive start for the Dogs, but it was not enough yet. Round three paired the number one seed and third-ranked Florida State Seminoles against the Dogs. Entering the top of the ninth, the Dogs were down eight to five, and facing the Seminole stopper, Ricky Kimball. It didn't look good for the Bulldogs. Could they see it happen? It was four and eight to six. David Mitchell threw a bases loaded walk from the shaken Kimball, and that brings Masters to the plate for his sixth plate appearance of the ball game. If Kimball can't throw a strike, this ball game is tied. If Masters gets a base hit, this ball game is at least tied. The 3-1 pitch is a drive. driver's seat, one win away from Omaha. Florida State eliminated Illinois in the loser's bracket and set up a rematch for the Dogs on Sunday night in front of 11,500 partisan fans. This was the largest crowd ever to see an NCAA regional tournament game. The Seminoles with number one starter guard Pinball on the mound, with the Bulldogs countering with left-hander Chris George, and neither team could keep the other from scoring. Florida State broke open a 9-9 tie with two runs at the top of the eighth, on the ball game 11 to 9. The Seminole win forced a deciding game the next afternoon. On the line of the regional championship, the trip to Omaha, and for the Bulldogs seniors, their dream. In a classic pitcher's duel, Bobby Reed matched up against Seminole starter Brad Gregory. Florida State pushed across single runs in the bottom of the first and second, and won a one-blown home run by Seminole center fielder Chris Roberts. The Bulldogs scored a single run on Echo solo shot in the second. Trailing 2-1, Bulldog miscues allowed Florida State to score a third run in the bottom of the seventh and go up 3-1. This Bulldog team refused to be denied. Singles by David Mitchell and John Cohen gave the Dogs runners in the top of the eighth. And with two outs, Tommy Raffo delivered. The pitch on the way. There's a drive to right. Right fielder going back at the wall. Shave will surprise you from time to time with opposite field power. If he could get one up, he has a chance to hit it a long way. Donnie waits, and here's the pitch. And he lines it back up the middle. Back to base hit. Here comes Raffo. Here comes the throw. He slides. He saves. The Bulldogs take a lead. Florida State came out swinging in their half of the eighth. With one out, had runners at first and third. 
this was not to be their moment. Eddie Perez lined a reed pick right back at the tall right-hander who made the game-saving stab and doubled the runner off of first. That play set it off. The Bulldogs would do it. The 1-1 one -one to Chris. There's a drive into center. David Mitchell is there. He got it. This ball game is over. The Bulldogs go to the College World Series 1990. And they do it in dramatic fashion as they come from behind and come from behind and come from behind one more time. While the dogs stumbled at times during the conference schedule, they remained confident and billed themselves as a tournament team. When the dust settled after the regional, there was no one left to argue that billing. Before leaving town for Omaha, the dogs had one more victory to celebrate off the field. It was again Masters leading the way, as he was named the Southeastern Conference Mayo Scholar Athlete of the Year. Just one year prior, Masters had been named the Academic Player of the Year for the entire country. Mississippi State Baseball is proud to be the only program to have produced both the SEC Player of the Year, Will Clark was named that in 1985, and the SEC Male Scholar Athlete of the Year in Burke. There was a tremendous air of excitement and anticipation as the dogs went through their practice sessions at Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha. Bulldogs had drawn an opening round game with the conference goal, Georgia, and left-handed pitcher Dave Fleming. The Bulldogs had been shut out by Fleming earlier, and no one imagined that he could do it again. But while Bobby Reed pitched a tremendous game, Fleming again mastered the dogs, shutting them out on only four hits. It was a frustrating beginning for Mississippi State, but with a day off before the next game, the dogs were determined not to let anything spoil their time in Omaha. Bulldogs' next opponent was Georgia Southern, who suffered an extra inning loss to Stanford in the opening round. With their backs against the wall, the Dogs came out swinging. Scoring 11 first inning runs to set a College World Series record, the Dogs cruised to a 15-1 victory. Tracy Jobe struck out a career-high 10 batters over six innings to get the win. Mississippi State counted out 16 hits, with John Cohen, John Chase, and Jim Robinson getting three each. Robinson also hit his sixth home run of the year. With that win, the Bulldogs were set to face the number one ranked Stanford Cardinals. Bobby Reed again took the hill as the Dogs fought to stay alive, but this was not to be their day. Stanford pushed across a run in the top of the third to go up one nothing. but the Dogs bounced back in the bottom half and Scott Mitchell's first home run of the year. Stanford scored again in the top of the fourth. Down 2-1, to one, Mississippi State threatened to go ahead in the bottom half of the inning. 
two outs and runners at second and third, Rex Butner hit a hard ground ball back through the middle. But instead of a two-run single, the ball deflected off the pitching rubber to the shortstop who threw the first for out number three. That would be as close as the Dogs would get. Stanford scored three times in the seventh to go up five to one as the Dogs struggled to get a clutch hit. Adding one in the ninth, Stanford won six to one and ended a magical year for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. While the disappointment of the season-ending loss to Stanford was great, these 1990 Bulldogs had much to be proud of. The team and individual accomplishments were many. The 50-21 record marked the third time that a Ron Polk coach Mississippi State team had reached the 50-win mark. The Dogs hosted an NCAA regional tournament for the fourth consecutive year and the sixth time in seven seasons. The Dogs earned a share of the SEC tournament with a co-championship. Mississippi State set single season team records for games played at 71, at bats with 2,510, hits with 784, innings pitched with 616, strikeouts by a pitching staff at 454, shutouts 10, putouts 1,848, and total chances 2,705. Five players had at least 90 hits. Five players had at least 50 RBIs. Burke Masters finished his career at Mississippi State as the all-time leader in games played with 251, at bats with 937, and hits with 295. His 295 hits is also a Southeastern Conference record. Seniors Tommy Raffo, Tracy Eccles, and John Cohen concluded their MSU careers ranked in the top 10 of the school's all-time list in both home runs and runs batted in. Raffo's 366 career batting average places him sixth on MSU's all-time batting average list. Junior Bobby Reed, a third-round draft pick by the Texas Rangers, completed his Mississippi State career second in wins with a 35-7 and record and an 833 winning percentage. Three Bulldogs were named All-Southeastern Conference, Tommy Raffo, John Cohen, and Bobby Reed. In two postseason tournaments, the Bulldogs were named Most Valuable Player. John Harden in the SEC Tournament, Burke Masters in the South Regional. Tommy Raffo was named Second Team All-American by the American Baseball Coaches Association, and Masters and Raffo were named First Team on the GTE Academic All-American Team for the second consecutive year. In addition to Masters and Raffo, four other Bulldogs were recognized on the Academic All-SEC Honor Roll. Chuck Daniel, John Harden, Rob Norman, and Joey Hamilton. Yes, these Bulldogs had much to be proud of. They had the courage to set their goals high, and more than that, they had the will to see it happen. Each day I live, I want to be a day to give the best of me. I'm only one, but not alone. My finest day is yet unknown. I broke my heart for every game to taste the sweet. I faced the pain. I 